Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I am coming to you from my porch couch. It is cold, it is about 40 degrees. It's sunny, but it's windy and it's cold and I have a lot of things to do, but I really wanted to come to you guys with this information today because I wanted to bring you an update from Sunflower Steve. You guys remember my friend Sunflower Steve. He is a flower farmer out of Wisconsin. He has been doing this for over 20 years and he spent 12 years developing this amazing double sunflower and he shared it with me last year and I shared it with you guys and we were so excited about it and he was looking around for a, a purchaser for these seeds to help sell them to the general public and uh, you guys have been waiting to hear so I thought I would bring the news to you guys here on my YouTube channel. Now, if you had signed up on the email list way back months ago, then you've already heard this information. If you did sign up for the email list and didn't get this information, it's likely that you signed up on the wrong website. There are a couple of other Flower Hill Farms around the country. So if you signed up and didn't get information, it's probably because you signed up on a different one. But hundreds of you have already been notified so unfortunately, the seeds are not going to be available this season. And Steve knows how upsetting this is. I know everyone's gonna be disappointed. He's disappointed. He really wanted to get the seeds into your hands as soon as possible. But the good news is he has signed an agreement. It's a confidential agreement right now. We can't talk about it. But I can tell you that the goal is to increase production of Steve's amazing double sunflowers. So this this summer, the growing season, is going to be spent increasing seed production. They're gonna put a vast majority of the seed in the ground at several different locations to increase the amount of seed that will become available because they just don't think they can meet demand right now with the seed available. So I'm gonna let Steve tell you a little bit more about this and Steve also shows us a little bit about his property. And then after Steve is done showing you all around his property, I've got a lot of things to open up. I'm very excited. This is one of about eight boxes with lots I have plants and I have tubers, I have wisteria, I have clematis, so many things to open up and I'll do that with you guys after we get here from Steve. Hello flower friends, as Nicole has let you people know that have put on her uh, email list, I have signed a deal with the seed company, um, however, after discussing things with them, uh, they thought it best that we spend our time producing as much seed as possible this year uh, because according to them they literally don't think we'll have enough seed uh, to meet demand which is great but um, causes the issue of us having to put pretty much everything in the ground this year <clears throat> and uh, be growing at a couple different locations to accomplish that to mitigate any kind of uh, weather happenstance I might have here that would negate any production happening here as well as there so we're spreading the risk around to make sure that we have enough seed and uh, on my property here, I'm gonna still be trying to tease out the colors uh, to have several different varieties within the mix. And then a big chunk of my property, uh, farther away from those test plots, I will be growing just the mix. And the folks that are gonna be growing the seed uh, to help me distribute it are gonna be growing just mostly the mix as well. Um, so that's, that's the, key, the thing on that. I'm, I'm sorry you can't get it this year, I really am. I didn't mean to dangle that carrot and have you not be able to have it this year? I wish we could do something, but uh, according to them, we need to get every seed in the ground, which is great for me to hear, kind of unbelievable for me to hear, but uh, I'm happy to hear it. So um, stay tuned in the future. Uh, have any new colors or anything this year, anything else I'm working on, I'll be taking pictures of it and showing it to you, showing it to Nicole and she can show it to you. And uh, again, we'll be doing some more of these collabs. I'll kind of show you how things are going here on the farm. Um, actually, I'll give you a little preview right now of what's not growing and what it'll look like when it is growing. So, we call this hill Pride Rock. My kids named it after the Lion King movie because the glaciers came along and just dumped out some of these big rocks in the middle of nowhere here. Um, there we go. And they always said it kind of looked like the Lion King. Uh, eventually, this is where my wife and I want to build a house and retire. That's the farm over there. That's where our house is and everything. Um, that field right there is about two acres and that gets sunflowers in it. Um, let's see, my blue baptizia is kind of behind the trees there. That's a field there that the blue baptizia in it. Uh, this field right here is my test baptizia field. Uh, that's several acres there. Down there where my golden retriever is digging, that's just big blue stem grass. I use that to make grass shocks in the fall. The field right before the dirt there um, is my yellow baptizia. 
And then that field right there is also sunflowers. There's been another two acres there. Uh, all this land back here is ours too. We just grow uh, crops on that. Um, I think my kids are going to be building a house back in that woods over there. But And then that field on the other side of that tree line there, that used to be uh, pasture. That's getting turned into beans this year. The cornfield over there is also mine. And on the other side of those pine trees, that's where I've got about nine acres of perennial shrubs. Uh, that's where I was cutting down the, the hydrangeas, and that's where all the lilacs and things are. So that's kind of the, the property. So I'll come up here in the, in the uh, summer and show you what this all looks like. Look completely different than this. Alrighty then. Ready to go back to the house, Harv? Harvey? Hey, bud. You ready to go back to the house? Good boy. To check you for ticks. So I'm very, very, very excited for Steve and I'm excited for you guys and I can't wait to bring you back to his property and he's got a lot of videos coming up. We've got some, um, he shows us how he directs seeds, thousands and thousands and thousands of zinnias. He also shows us his whole method of pruning those hydrangeas, those hydrangeas that you guys were like, how is he getting those stems? He shows us exactly how he does that. Those videos will be coming up later this week. He was leaning towards the name Serendipity. We're not sure if that name is going to stick or not, but either way, they're Steve's amazing double sunflowers and we're so excited for this season and I am gonna be growing several hundred of them here you'll be able to see them here and I'm sure Steve's gonna be giving us updates um, throughout the growing season um, they're like he said they're growing it in multiple different locations just in case there's a crop failure he's learned that the hard way he already lost almost all of the seeds one year way back remember these took 12 years to develop Steve's been working on this for that long so i'm so excited about what's to come and i mean hopefully you guys will be able to grow them next year now i want to open this i've been dying to open this i don't even know what it is i have an idea what it is i ordered this is from brushwood nursery they're clematis experts specialists if you will and uh it came from georgia athens georgia actually which is where dr a lives dr alan armitage uh, by the way, so I am going to go get something to open them with because I forgot to do that So I'll be right back. <laughs> I see what this is. So I ordered this um, Some of this is not for me. So for Mother's Day, which they all already know except for my stepmom And I don't think my stepmom watches like all the videos. So fingers crossed she doesn't watch this one. So for Mother's Day I ordered my mom and my mother-in-law a clematis and I ordered my stepmother a wisteria. So let's, ooh. Okay, this is, these are both clematis. Oh gosh, oh gosh, I'm so nervous. So this is how it's packed, like really well, really well. I'm nervous where to, oh see it's got green. <gasps> it looks so good, it's got life. I'm so nervous. Oh, just be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. Okay, okay, all right. They're in hefty pots. So this is the Clematis Rose Supreme. I love it, look how cute it is. And this one is the Clematis Tega. And same idea, it's got some nice, healthy, beautiful looking um, green on top. I'm gonna bring these and put them down in the grow room. I, my mother-in-law already knows. I think she picked out one. Can't remember. I'll have to figure it out. Oh, and then I'm keeping the other ones. <laughs> I also bought myself a wisteria and uh, I also bought myself a couple clematis or maybe just one. I can't remember, it's been so long. I think I ordered these back in January. After Aaron the Impatient Gardener recommended this company. So this is on recommendation from Aaron at the Impatient Gardener and hope they grow well. <laughs> I'm sure they're great, sure. They're great, hers always grow beautifully. Okay, so box number two. Same company, Brushwood Nursery, Clematis Specialists. Ah! Oh. <gasps> Two more clematis. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, so one of these is called Madame La Coulter. La Coulter. And then we have Clematis Crystal Fountain. Okay, I'm gonna pull this up. Oh, you look so good. Again, look at that life. Look at that beautifulness. Fantastic. That root system is massive. Like a half gallon. It literally is, 
It's almost like they grew them in half gallon jugs and then opened them up. Look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. <sighs> Amazing. Amazing. So yes, the crystal fountain and the Madame La Coute. So I'm um, saving all of these boxes that are like this size uh, for my seedling sale because a lot of my stuff is in like three and a half or four inch pots or those milk cartons or I, I actually tossed most of the peat pots. They did not do well. Um, so I'm saving boxes this size for when people come to get their seedlings. Um, they can use this to bring them home. So clematis, if you don't know, is like a vining. It, it likes to grow up and I'm planning on putting mine along the deer fence. And uh, I know my mother-in-law has a specific spot that she grows clematis and my mom actually has like a central air unit and she has a little bit of an arbor over top of the central air unit. And the clematis that had been growing on there for years, something happened to it and it's no longer there. So we're gonna be replacing it with one of these. Box number three. Okay, all right. This must be the wisteria. I bought my sister a wisteria last year. I think it grew like six inches, but she still has it. Wisteria blue moon. Oh, look at how cute. Hi, I'm your new plant. <laughs> so this must be the main package. And this is a uh, certification and it tells you what to do with them. It just says um, that they trimmed me for shipping to make it easier and then uh, it'll be great. Oh, see, they did use a pot and it says that they uh, they recycle the original pot that they grow them in. So they must grow them in a very large half gallon container. And then they reuse the same pots every year. That's fantastic. I love that. Okay, so here's the wisteria. So this does not have leafy growth, but it does have green vine growth, which is fantastic. Greeny vine. And like I said, Wisteria Blue Moon, and I have two of these. The second one has a little bit more growth, not that much, like a half an inch more on that one. Oh, so these can grow pretty aggressively, and in some places they're invasive, but uh, that's where there's like a ton of them. Um, but I just envision them on the deer fence. Like I wanna keep them pretty much on the deer fence. I have a lot of climbing things going on the deer fence, including some sweet peas, uh, some hops, some wisteria, some clematis, also growing, oh, a lot of other scarlet runner beans and um, red noodle beans. I'm basically, <laughs> I wasn't gonna tell you about this right now, but I'm basically gonna be lining the inside of the deer fence with um, just stuff that are gonna climb the deer fence. So we'll see, we'll see how it works out. I'm starting that project, hopefully this week. I just got the supplies and uh, after tomorrow night or tonight, after tomorrow night, the lows look real good for planting. So, ah. all right, so the rest of the stuff that I have to open up are dahlia tubers. And I already did open some up, but then there's one box that I haven't touched at all. I think that plants make the best gifts. I really do. Speaking of, this first box of tubers that I received the other day, I got a package in the mail. I had no idea where it was from. Uh, the name of the company is not one that I had recognized, and it's a gift. So I opened up this priority mailbox, and inside was a card. Here you go from Whidbey Island. Keep doing you. Some are surprises and some are named, but good luck. And this is from Kim at Salty Acres. I love that name. Salty Acres Flower Farm in Washington State. Kim sent me tubers. Thank you, Kim. And there are some varieties that I really wanted. And I didn't really order um, specialty varieties this year. I ordered, I, you guys know, you, you saw the video, I told you what I ordered, but um, a lot of the other varieties are pricey and I order in sets of 25 mostly. So I did not order some of these. So, so and they're, oh my gosh, Kim, tell me what your uh, storage method is because these are fantastic. Really, really, really solid tubers. There's a bunch of unnamed ones, which I'm excited about. I love a surprise, it's my favorite. Uh, which are great and they all have eyes, so thank you so much. Yeah, even this little tiny one has some really nice looking eyes and this one's labeled Polka. 
polka is awesome and I've never grown it before, but there are one, two, I think three polka tubers. I already put one in dirt downstairs. Yeah, this has great, there's an eye right there. It's polka. So polka is um, kind of like roughly in the middle, beautiful, I can't wait. I'm super excited about that one. Also super excited about Hamari Gold. Thank you so much. Look at this, isn't the tuber beautiful? <laughs> it is a beautiful tuber, but Hamari Gold is even better to look at. So I got a couple, nope, just one of those. So she sent one of those and then here's another um, surprise. Oh my gosh, great looking eyes, fantastic. And then brown sugar, brown sugar. And I believe there are two or three brown sugar tubers and uh, brown sugar was Gina's favorite last year. Flower friend Gina loved brown sugar and I'm so excited to grow it. Thank you, Kim. I am excited and just a few more weeks and I'll be able to get these in the ground. I might pot some up downstairs just to get a little bit of a jump on the season, but I'm running out of room in the grow room. So um, I did start 50 dahlias from seed. I also have the Jessica dahlias, which are the ones my sister got me for Christmas. And uh, those are six inches tall. They look great. Okay, so what's next? This big old box comes to me from Leo Burby. So these come in bags of 25 and they come in clumps. So they're not just tubers. They're, oh, they're clumps of tubers, and you'll get this sometimes. Some will come with broken necks. That's not good. Those are not viable tubers, but there are still two tubers with eyes on here, actually three small tubers that look okay. So, um, and I wouldn't plant the ones with broken necks. Just cut them off. Like That's not gonna grow anything. Just cut them off. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste my space with those broken necks. They're not gonna grow anything but this still has viable eyes and three miniature tubers. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that one. So this is Extase. Yeah, a lot of these have, have broken necks. I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleaning up. Um, I, I really do have to make sure that they're not rotten. This is a rotten tuber right here. Just go through and like clean them up. This, this tuber is soft on the end. I am not gonna keep that on here. It's actually squishy. I don't want that but it does have other mother tubers with nice eyes. This one has, out of the three, it has two broken necks. Broken necks are not great. Make sure you take a close look at the broken necks though, because some of them might have enough to actually grow. Like this was a broken neck, but I don't know if you can see it, it has a viable eye right there. So instead of throwing the broken neck out, I'm going to keep this one. But, and this is a broken neck as well. You can see it's a broken neck, uh, but it doesn't have an eye. It's, it broke too far down. If it broke maybe up there or something, maybe it would have an eye, um, but it didn't. Anyway, I don't have time to do all these right now. Um, it, it is gonna take some effort. Broken necks can be discouraging, but uh, all it takes is one good tuber uh, to grow a plant. The next bag is 25 Cornell Bronze, which I'm very, very excited about. These are one of my favorite color dahlias. Ah! And they're always perfect because dahlias really come into their own in, in the fall around here, August, September. So let's see what these babies look like. Oh my goodness, much different than the Extase. So look at that baby. That's amazing looking, and I have a couple broken necks, but not that many. There's two broken necks on this entire clump. And this is so massive that I could split this in maybe two or three, maybe even four. If I take a real good look. Uh, potential, look at that, it's amazing. This is what you wanna see. You wanna see a solid clump or no broken necks, really. That's what you want. Nice looking eyes, no sign of um, crown gall or leafy gall that I can see yet. Ooh, cut that one right off right away. This has just one with a little bit of a mold on it. It's a broken neck anyway, so it's just rotting. Bye. Don't want that spreading. Now when you're looking for signs of disease, you're looking for kind of what looks like cauliflower growth. There'll be way too many eyes. If you have 15 or 20 eyes in a clump at a very small, like in a thumbnail area, that's probably, there's something wrong. 
I am, last year was my first year dealing with Dahlia disease. So I am not an expert, but I am learning rather quickly what to look out for. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna have to take my time another time with all of this inspection. And I wanna show you guys the last bag in here. So I, I think I only, yeah, I bought 75 from Leo Burby. This last bag of 25 in here is Joey Morella. Ooh, nice eyes, a couple broken necks. Let's snip those off. But we have gorgeous eyes, nice bright purple eyes too. Ooh, look at those fingerlings. Some are good, some are not good. But the most important thing is that there are viable eyes on this dangly spider. <laughs> That's in this box. So I ordered 75 total from Leo Burby. I'm really happy with the Joey Morella and the Cornell Bronze. The x -Dace looks like a lot of broken necks on there. So that's kind of disappointing, but I think each one will have at least one viable tube. Okay, the final package is from Longfield Gardens. All right, let me bring this down here so I can see what I'm working with. Okay, so I went over all of these two in my I Dream of Dahlia's video. That's gonna be an annual video, by the way. Okay, so here I have three different collections. So I bought a burgundy collection. That is not it. This is sugar plum mix. This is the burgundy collection. And then this one is the Fleur flirty fleurs collection. Oh my gosh. So they're all individually labeled, which is cool because I thought they were just going to come as like a mix, but they're not except for this, this sugar plum mix. Looks like it might be a mix. I don't know if these tubers are labeled. Oh, these look nice. These are per like perfect solid tubers. Couple of eyes, no signs of disease yet. Same thing with this one. We've got a couple of eyes, a couple broken necks, no big deal. This one's got like 10 tubers on it. This is the Burgundy Collection. There are nine tubers in here and they're all individually labeled, which is fantastic. Wasn't sure how it was gonna come. I've never ordered from Longfield Gardens before. Some nice looking clumps in here. Ooh, nice growth, all have eyes. There are three tubers in there. And then these ones are a white mix that I picked up. I'm gonna have to take these out and take a closer look at them, but they're packed with uh, a lot of peat and I don't wanna make a mess right now. <laughs> but just by wiggling it around and looking, It feels solid, it feels solid. It's nicely packed. I'm excited. So the dahlias are here. I probably will pot some up. If any look like they have possible gall, I will um, pot them up downstairs and take a look at their eyes and see if they kind of grow weird. I think I might do that just to be safe. I, I had a lot of issues with my uh, tubers last year and I don't want to have the same problem. I'd like to actually get some dahlias this year. so. Uh, I do have the, the tubers that I saved that were my own that were fine. They're downstairs. I have to kind of get like a closer look and see how they're doing. I did check them a couple weeks ago and like 90% of them were great. So I cannot plant these into the ground until around Memorial Day. They like to have uh, warm soil, at least 50 degrees, and uh, my last frost date is not for a couple more weeks. So I'm going to pot some of them up, like I said, and then the rest of them I'm gonna put directly into the ground, probably mid, second or third week in May. Probably Memorial Day, just to keep it safe, because like I said, they do not like uh, cold. You know what, I'm gonna look at the forecast and play it by ear. That's basically how farming works, right? So that's gonna do it for today's video. I have a lot of stuff going on. I have a laundry list of things that I've been doing around the farm and stuff to do. I've got tulips to harvest. I have daffodils to harvest. I have Mother's Day to get ready for. It's been crazy, but I'll hopefully be able to keep you guys up to date along the way. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. So I know it's April, but I just cleaned out my breezeway today. That was one of my projects that I checked off my list. I found a bunch of my hats that I made. This is my March hat, my March hat. Has, has been found in April. So I don't care, I'm wearing it. It's my little St. Patrick's Day. I put a little wooden button of a clover. I've had this for years, I love it. So they're gonna increase production and they're gonna try to get as many seeds as possible with the hopes of having them for... 
Hey, be nice, Frizzle. Frizzle, Frizzle. Chicken, pecking order, it's a real deal. <laughs> Where was I? Don't hate me. <laughs> Ladies! <laughs> you were waiting for the chickens to interrupt me so you could ask me a question? Well, I'm waiting for someone to interrupt you because I didn't want to interrupt you. You didn't want to interrupt me? I appreciate that. Sure, you can go ahead and put a movie in. Because okay. I saw the dragon from Colosio and I didn't oh. finish it. Oh, okay, go ahead. That said, here you go from Whibby Island. Whibby Island, Whibby Island, Whibby, Whibby, Whibby. Gina's texting me. Hold on, Gina, I'm recording a video.